Hey, what's up YouTube? So today I have something pretty exciting to show you guys. So as you can see, some of my pieces of gear are in this dash tab. And what do we have on for my gloves? Hate Forge. Now I know you guys might think it's a little bit of a meme. How can you actually play Aura Stacker with Hate Forge? Like, is that even possible? Don't you need to be a Pathfinder to get the flask effect? Well, it turns out it was a major struggle, but that's just the fun part about PoE and this these build diaries are kind of like trying to explore about how you can do a specific build that's not so meta and trying to adopt a build that you like into something else that exists already and that's a lot of like how build going or build making goes is like someone expounds upon or not ex expands upon someone else's build and tries to make it better and different in their own iteration until the skill is like so fleshed out that there's just a meta for how everything is done and that's when it kind of gets boring but aura stacker is kind of different in that sense every league there's something different there's some uh there's so many different options for this build and that's why i like it and that's why this diary series is able to complete and go on for so long like if i was just playing like say ed contagion or bladefall blade blast the ceiling for those builds is pretty low or creativity you have like there's no cluster jewels to really swap out there's no aura effect to hit there's no like internal dilemma if i should go for 400 percent aura effect or 350 percent or should i go for crit multi nodes on the tree now a lot of times nowadays like builds are kind of like you just put it into pop right for path of building if you see you have a high damage here and then you go to your calcs and you see that your damage taken here effective health pool is relatively high then the build is pretty good and yeah i mean that's how it is for a lot of builds but this build is kind of brand new i had to really try out a lot of different items to make it work now is this build really really good and better than spark or stacker probably not and i don't know if it'll ever be but i'm gonna try to make it work as well as possible within the confines of my currency pool but let's get straight into the gear overview and then I'll explain how the hate forge mechanic works because I know a lot of people are curious about these gloves and why they're actually 85x. They're 88x right now. I bought them for 82. So I'm not really sure where I'll go with the price of them. I feel like the skill and build is so fun, but the supply of the gloves is so limited that it will go through the roof. But 8090x is insane. At least it means that there's a chase item in this league instead of there just being no chase items. So there's two items in this game and they're both in my stash. Hate Forge and Head Hunter at the moment. But let's get into the gear overview and yeah. So gear overview, you know how I always say we have the exact same nebulous? Well, no longer. We have a Yao Max Accord. Now why do we want this weapon? The weapon is still kind of up in the air at the moment so Reduced soul gain prevention duration is the name of the game. So we have our flask here, soul catcher, which is also reduced soul gain prevention duration. So we want to try to scale the reduced soul gain prevention duration high enough so that you see this number 4.48 on the top right. It becomes zero when you press the flask, which means that it starts this infinite loop, which I'll later go on about in the hate forge mechanic section. But the helm, we're still using the same helm. I'm pretty sure that I can make a better helm for this build, but maybe I can start putting heralds in here and it will actually have lightning exposure and different exposures now. So probably try moving around the auras a little bit and see how it goes. But next we have warped timepiece. Now this item goes into the same vein as reduced soul gain prevention duration. So we're trying to reduce the skill effect duration of fall lightning strike so that the skills, um, so that this skill's soul gain prevention is as low as possible. So this is another reduced skill effect duration. Then I allocate a champion of the cause. Now using this amulet is kind of a big hit because we don't have any reservation of skills. So we lose 5% reduced skill reservation, which is kind of bad. Now the next one we have is we're using a rot blood promise. And this is not too shabby, but... It's not like there's any other option. This ring is mandatory so that we can put temp chains on blasphemy. And I'll get into that later in the hate forge mechanics section about why we need blasphemy temp chains. So this ring is mandatory for the build and the call of the brotherhood. I'm still using the hatred one with global fizz damage. 
And now we have the Shavs. And this plus two, plus two Shavs is actually kind of troll because it ends up being a plus four Shavs for a Lightning Strike. So the links for Vol Lightning Strike that I'm currently using is Awaken Ellie Damage, Vol Lightning Strike, Elemental Pen, Anomalous Trinity, Awaken Added Lightning Damage, and Increased Crit Damage. So you can see that this skill breakdown has lightning and cold damage, but I think the cold damage is actually higher overall because of Call of the Brotherhood and Hatred. And now the boots are the same. We still have the mana regen enchant, which actually turns out to be pretty good for this build. And this belt is mandatory too for the build. It's Chains of Emancipation. And this is how the whole skill works. So your enemy inflicts temp chain on you. And when you lose temp chains, you gain maximum rage and you're immune to curses while you have at least 25 rage. So that is actually... So basically the way the belt works is once you get to 25 rage, you get one rage back and then you go immediately back to 50. So that's how you can... As long as you have the flask up and you can just keep casting this over and over again as fast as your attack speed goes to. And it's actually a pretty cool style of play. It's like pretty much false spark. But I'll get into the mechanics a little later on. So here we have the flash soul catcher. So this is pretty much used for soul gain prevention duration. And now we also have a diamond flask. I originally had a diamond flask of warding, but it turns out that it's a really bad idea because you need the temp chain to work. So you have to use, so I just wrote a staunching since I no longer had bleed immunity. Now this build ends up being kind of interesting how everything goes so what we have here is that you need reduced skill effect duration on a tree and you need flask effect duration so that you can get the soul game prevention to zero so the flask effect is important because it scales the soul game prevention on the soul catcher which is the additives adds with the amount of reduced skill duration you have on the tr overall so here we have eight percent but you can see it's kind of needed, right? So if I press the flask, it's at zero soul gain prevention. But if I refund this point for flask effect, it ends up being at 0 0.08. Now, I'm not sure exactly if that's good enough, if it's workable, because your attack speed is honestly capped at a certain amount of time. So I'm not sure what the best soul gain prevention time actually is. So maybe we can optimize that a little bit and see how it feels like. So I might just drop these three points and try to do some maps and see how it feels with it. So I also have to take these nodes here, which is reduced skill effect duration. But basically, we're just trying to stack as much reduced skill effect duration on our gear or tree as possible, along with flask effect. So this also means that we want flask effect for spiked concoction. So Alchemist Genius, when you use a flask, and uh, increases the effects of the flask by 20%. So that's what gives us the extra 20% flask effect. Now I'm still using some voices set up. I'm not really sure what actually is the best setup anymore because I'm not at 300% at the moment and I think I'm pretty far away from it at this point because I have to use this random cluster. Maybe I can... Maybe, I really need like level 100 and 3 socket voices as cringe as that may sound. But also the jewels are kind of similar. You, all, you also need to use this jewel because this is another flask effect jewel. If you take out this jewel, 0 0.08 seconds again. So this jewel is very important. I can get a reduced skill reservation one. And you can see that multi and elemental skills, these actually end up being dual multi skills for lightning, lightning strike. This one is not as it's a lightning and spell. So if you want to play it, you need to pick up lightning and skills and elemental skills will work. So this one would work. This one here I bought for attack speed and multi. So you can actually get some of these like dual multi jewels pretty cheap. And here's another one, flash supplies, so you have 10% increased effect. So we're just stacking some flask effect if possible. This one actually works with white lightning strike. So it's quite a few of them that work. This one also works. So this is another dual multi one. So overall, pretty interesting setup we have here. And we will try to perfect it a little bit more. I don't think this is very good. Maybe there's another mana one or something else like that. But that's basically the gear overview. You can see that the main pieces that you need to do to play Hate Forge is the Hate Forge, the Chains of Emancipation, and the Rot Blood Ring. And you will need this if you don't have enough Flask Effect. But 
if you're not a Pathfinder, it's actually impossible to get enough Flask Effect to not wear this item. Because if you don't wear this item, your skill Soul Gain Prevention is 15%. And that's just impossible to overcome. This is 0.48. Maybe this is actually possible to overcome. But we'll see. You, if you took these nodes. So I'm thinking like maybe the Soul Gain Prevention time just needs to be attack time. But hopefully someone knows like exactly what the perfect Soul Gain Prevention time is. So... I can optimize the build for that so let me know in the comments if you actually play this build and have any knowledge about it but let's get into the mechanics of the hate forge because this is the hottest item in poe it has the biggest percent gain in price so hate forge gloves a eh? so a lot of people see these videos of people playing hate forge and they're literally just spamming lightning and then everything's just dying right just a bunch of lighting stuff coming out and that's actually pretty cool and that's exactly how this build works is that there is a loop that occurs so when you gain so you use your skill and it's at 26 rage exactly now if you can't get the skill to 26 rage you can divine the hate forge for the reduced rage cost of skills until it becomes 26 now the rage cost of the skill depends on the links you use because some skills cost more um mana multiplier which results in more rage so this ends up so you have 50 rage right now and you attack once and now you see we're stuck at 24 rage but the rage is not regenerating but that's because we have something called soul gain prevention if you read the text of the hate forge it says you cannot gain rage during soul gain prevention so that un does not allow us to reach 25 rage so the way we generate rage is that the chains of emancipation makes it so that when you lose temporal chains you gain maximum rage and you're immune to curses when you have at least 25 rage so that means we want to have temporal chains on ourselves which is why we use this ring with blasphemy temp chains so when we reach 25 rage we lose the temp chains because we become immune to curses and then we get maximum rage so basically we want to reach 24 rage so that we regenerate that one rage and then immediately reach max rage. So that's why when you press the soul catcher flask, you want to have zero soul gain prevention seconds so that you can immediately start regenerating the rage. And that's why you want your skill cost of all lightning strike to be 26 rage. So you press the soul catcher flask and then you can just attack infinitely as fast as you can possibly attack. So you have to make sure to always keep soul catcher flask up. And then you can see what this looks like. It's just an insane amount of lightning strikes coming out. And that is the general gist of why the Hate Forge build works. And the whole point of the build is to scale the scale soul gain prevention down to zero seconds. And you do this by having 100% reduced soul gain prevention duration. And we stack 15% here, 8% here, 23%. And this is additive. And then... That means if we have 23% here, and then we also have 15% here, 48 plus 5 plus 5, 48 plus 10, so 58%. So we just need a little bit of flask effect to reach, um, what's it called, 100%. So this flask is 40, so we need like 120% or so, or 20% effect of the flask. So we need it to get to like 52 or 20 to 30%. So that's why we have this one for 8% here, 8% here for 16% and 10%. And that brings it exactly to 0 seconds. Now that's why we actually have to use this weapon and I'm not really sure how to get out of it. But this is 0.48 seconds. Now not using this weapon would be pretty big because I feel like this weapon is pretty mediocre because its attacks per second is low. But we'll see if we can find a workaround for it. Because the main reason why we can't actually use something else is because we don't have the Flask Finder nodes from Pathfinder. Flask Effect nodes from Pathfinder. But in the end, it does work, the concept. But as you all know for Aura Stackers, our build is pretty struggle heavy for points. So having to take these points to travel down here is pretty bad. So maybe if we can drop any of these points here, maybe we can loop down here and sacrifice the jewel socket. I might try that again. It would be better. We also have to use lethal prize so that we can generate rage. So at the start of every map, like I'll show you in the upcoming clip, 
you'll have to wait till your rage generates to 24 so that you can reach 50. And the general mapping loop is that you have to make sure you have the flask up whenever you press fall lightning strike so the soul gain prevention is zero and not like four seconds. So pretty um, micro heavy build honestly if you want to have full um, uptime on vol lightning strike. So you can also see the price of the hate forge gloves right 662 chaos all the way to 12,500 chaos. So it went from 4x like a week or two ago to 80x or so. Now is it worth it to play hate forge? I think it's probably one of the most innovative builds and fun builds I've played in a long time. Obviously, it's probably a lot easier if I just went Pathfinder and went some cookie cutter build, but I also don't really like leveling, and I think Aura Stacker is not a bad solution for it. Obviously, this gear is extremely, extremely expensive, and the ES is kind of scuffed, but I believe it can work, and I think if once I fit in Grace, like right now I don't have Grace in because it's hard for me to fit in all the Aura since I lost a lot of RMR. I also think that the end game solution, if you want to play this setup, is to use a sack of walls and go CI and get a lot of reduced reservation because there's really no point in being low life when you're playing an attack skill for ES builds. But that also means that it might be a little harder to come by the mana reservation. Now, I don't know if I want to truly go all out on this build. I might do it because I really enjoy hate forge mechanics. I don't think that this build will be a long around after next league because I think some part of this interaction will get nerfed. I don't think they like the idea of spamming infinite vol skills as they've multiple times have nerfed like vol fireball and vol spark in the past but this is the best way to enjoy vol skills and it is actually very similar to vol spark or stacker or spark or stacker but now we're just using lightning strike and instead of spark lingering we just use lightning strike and all these projectiles shoot out. Another thing to keep in mind is that attack speed is very important for the build and I'll probably be maybe changing the helm enchant to get some um, extra projectiles on Vol Lightning Strike. But this will all come down to getting better or reduced reservation on the skill on these clusters and I think it would help out a lot because we're really missing out on reduced skill reservation after losing our neck. But I hope that helps you explain the Hate Forge concept because I think Hate Forge is a pretty like cool and interesting item but not many people understand why you need this ring for the temp chains to fall off so basically you just ping pong between 24 25 to 50 back down to 24 because you cast your vol lightning strike and since you have no soul game prevention and you spend rage for your vol lightning strike you just can cast it infinitely as fast as your attack speed is so that's why attack speed is such a good um, scaler of this build but Let's uh, show up a map demonstration and I'm going to show a shape, quick shaper kill to show like just how insane the damage of this build truly is even with like a super scuffed setup and bad um, jewels. So I just wanted to showcase a quick map, do a live demonstration of how the mapping process really works with this build because I played it for a little bit today and I was able to One find out some faces. pointers. So you right now at the start faces. you want to wait for your rage to hit now, 24 so then it goes to 50 truth. right away so you actually can't really start playing the map until you get that. Now whenever you want a lightning strike, you have to make sure this flash here, Soul Catcher, is going to be up. So it's kind of annoying, but you have to make sure that the flash is always up. But you can pretty much do an insane amount of damage with this build. I was actually surprised. Like when I first like tried it out, I was like, man, my damage is going to be too bad to actually do like regular maps. But it turns out that the damage is the least of my problems. And in right now, the main problem is the survivability. But you can see that it just clears everything. And you don't even need to make sure all the mobs die right away because the projectiles linger there for a very long time so the clear is actually pretty Can nuts. Can I not have but a moment's respite? Um, yeah but make sure when you ever attack you always have um, Random your soul catcher up. You There's a survive. You, you can see you literally just stand in the middle and there's so many projectiles that come out that so just make sure this flask is never down. If it's Ruin down, you're going to be in trouble. Suddenly. Right now, I'm not able to run a uh, Grace, but as time goes on, the aura effectiveness and number of auras I run will get better and better. And that's part of the fun of making a new build, is trying to see exactly what you can do to improve it. 
right now I actually pressed the flash right too fast, so that's why I wasn't able to get any additional attacks. Ruin seeks you. So it's very important to make sure to be vigilant about the Soul Catcher flash. It is kind of an annoying playstyle in a weird sense because you have to be so worried about this flash. And that's actually something I didn't really know Ruin coming into this build suddenly. was how flash dependent it is. I don't know if it's a lot better on Pathfinder, but I don't really think it would be because your soul game prevention is not really that different without the flask up. In fact, it might even be worse. It's a pretty punishing build. Approaches. There's not like that many builds in this game that punishing, I feel like, where you literally just cannot play the build if you forgot to press the flask. So if someone wants to try this out, if they have a lot of money, then it is definitely something to keep in mind about the playstyle of the build. And yeah, this is a pretty long the one. Storm comes swiftly. But I was actually pretty surprised at the clear speed of the build. But you can see it's pretty good for divine or ultimatums because pretty much you just spam Don't get the claim of spark pretty much in a weird sense. You can pretty much think of lightning strike as a spark skill. Um, the build is like one of his main uh, strong points. I feel like it's a single target if you're able to like pre-cast your ability. It's kind of exactly like Spark. So that's why I kind of like the skill, but in reality, the difference between it is that instead of Spark scaling skill duration, you are trying to scale reduced skill duration, so you have zero soul game prevention time. I was actually kind of happy that I tried this build out because... So let's see here. You can see the damage is absolutely crazy, right? Anyhow, I hope everyone enjoyed the short mapping clip and the shaper kill. You can see there's a lot of potential for this build. And I'm happy to try it in the coming days. Will I try it in inscribed ultimatums with 8 exalts? Probably not because this build is very very punishing if you fuck up like if you stop the uh, cycle You'll literally just be unable to attack for four seconds I'm thinking maybe if that happens, maybe you should have like lightning strike Just so you can do something but no nah, lightning strike costs too much rage with chain breaker So this build is do not mess up pressing the flask and that's why I think that Pathfinder is almost needed because Pathfinder allows you some error and if you do bosses, Pathfinder is pretty much almost 100% necessary. It's actually quite a shame because I think Necromancer would be a lot more fun playstyle because you would have a lot more attack speed. But maybe there's a way to get flash charges up more consistently that I'll find out. But this is just a proof of concept build video. I don't really feel like anyone should go out and copy it until I optimize the build more or see how viable it is. But this build can definitely do all content in the game. It might not be deathless, but you'll have the most fun while doing it. But if you liked the video and the explanation of Hateforge, be sure to like and subscribe. I stream every day on Twitch, and tomorrow I'll be doing a lot more experimentation with the Hateforge gloves. So be sure to check it out. Anyhow, everyone, thanks for watching, and I hope you find more exalts and maybe the Hateforge gloves than I do. And see you later.